Are you trying to figure out how to get good sound on your YouTube videos? Well, stick around. I'm listening. Now, this is possibly the most requested video I have, which is how to do audio in Lightworks. Now, there is a previous one that I made, but it's way out of date and it's time to bring it to the new version of Lightworks. Let's get going straight away. We've got a timeline with a bunch of random clips that I got from pexels.com. They're on the timeline, some transition effects, a fade in, fade out, and also a couple of titles put on the movie as well. So we're not going to talk about anything to do with how to edit today. If you do need a refresher or you need a tutorial on how to do that, look on your screen right now. There should be a link to my basics tutorial that will get you started. Now, immediately what we'll do is just move over to the audio tab because the rest of the video is going to actually take place here. We're dealing with audio after all. Now, let's look at what we've actually got on the timeline as far as audio is concerned. Audio 1, A1, which is over here as well, is a vocal track I recorded. It's just me talking over this absolutely ridiculous corporate video that I made. And Audio 2 and 3 is a stereo track. So we've got the left and the right channel of some synthesizer music I downloaded from YouTube Audio Library. Highly recommend it. Some great tracks over there. Now, the idea being that the pictures are playing, the music in the background, and my talking should all go together to make kind of like an advert, if you will. Not a very good one, I have to promise you. Now, what we need to do is pay special attention to the top right corner over here, this panel of our audio levels. Now, this panel over here is A1, which is our vocal track, A2 and 3, which is our stereo track. That's the left and right channel of our actual music. And we've got the left and right output. Now, that left and right is basically what audio is going to be sent out of Lightworks when we export the movie to upload it to YouTube or whatever we're going to do with it. So that's an important one to pay attention to as well. Let's play it from the start and see what we're dealing with. Now, the first thing to note is we saw a lot of red lines hovering at or around zero. Now, red is a very bad sign as far as audio is concerned, especially if you want to upload it to YouTube. We'll talk about that more in a second. Let's have a listen to the audio. That's the music track plus my vocals and see how that fares. Now, I don't know if you heard my voice there because I could barely hear it through the headphones I'm wearing. So there's something that's gone wrong here. So the first thing we need to do is adjust the level of the actual music because it's way, way, way too loud. It's it's overpowering everything. So what I'm going to do is pull down the level of the left and the right of the music track to about minus 15 or so. We'll just play that again. And now we're going to pay special attention to where the top of the levels are when I play the music. And there they are hovering at around are minus 18 to, to minus be? 15. That's not bad. I'm going to move them up just ever so slightly. So I don't mind if the music's a little bit louder. We can always adjust it in the track as well, which we're going to do. So let's have a listen to that and pay special attention with your eyes to where the levels are here. So they're hovering you, between you? minus 18 and minus 12. For me, that's perfect for a YouTube video. That's actually recommended for background music from about minus 18 decibels to about minus 12. I'm quite happy with that. Now, I'm going to mute the music and just listen to the vocals now. Are you where you want to be? And you can see that my vocal is hovering around the minus 6. It's a little bit loud, so I'm going to turn it down a couple of decibels to about minus 3, minus 4. Let's listen to that again. Are you where you want to be? Yeah, I'm pretty cool with that because that's between minus 12 and minus 6. And that's the recommended level for vocals. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's switch on both tracks now. And let's have a listen to where my vocals sit in relation to the music in the background. Are you where you want to be? Now you can hear it. It actually sounds okay. But I think we can take it to the next level. In fact, we should take it to the next level. So what I'm going to do is add a fade in for the music because it starts a little bit 
out of nowhere. So it doesn't sound good. So what we'll do is I'm just going to zoom in one. And with my mouse, I'm going to go to this audio level. So that's that white line. And what you can do is pick it up and drag it up and down like that. And that makes the music louder when it's in the plus, And it makes it quieter when it's in the minus. At the moment, it's set to zero because basically zero means we haven't changed it. Now, this zero is not really anything to do with this zero over here. I know it gets confusing, but this is basically the track's volume. So zero being the volume that you brought the track in on, and then any adjustments you do plus, you're making it louder than it was when it came in, and anything below zero, you're making it quieter. So what I'm going to do is click at the start there. There's a little yellow marker, and I'm going to go roughly over here and click once again in the level line there. Go to the front, and I'm going to drag that marker all the way down to where it says mute there. If we listen to that, that's going to be a really nice fade in. Perfect. Now what I want to do is take the volume of the background music down every time I speak. Now technically, that's called ducking. So we're going to duck the audio every time my vocals come in. So in order to duck audio in the background of vocals, what you need is two markers at the start, and two markers at the end. Let me show you how to do that. I'm going to go to my first word there, move my mouse down, and click in a marker. I'm going to go back a few and click in a marker there. I'm going to go to the last sound I made there, go forward a bit, and there. So basically, it's two markers at the end, two markers at the start. Take your mouse into the middle and pull the level down. Now, I generally pull it down to about 16, excuse me, minus 16, minus 17, minus 18, depending on the music. So now I've got this pulled to, let's go for minus 16.9, so it's almost minus 17. And let's listen to the effect of the music ducking out of the way of the vocals. Are you where you want to be? Quite like that, that was quite cool. So if you have a look over here, it fades very quickly before I start speaking and actually fades in while I'm saying the last sound. I quite like that. Let's do the second one. So again, we go from the first sound I make down to the level there, back a bit, click a marker. I'm not being exact here, so don't worry about measuring anything with a ruler. Let's go to the last sound I make there and click again. Again, let's go to minus 16 there. Let's listen to that. Or are you just moving aimlessly? Yeah, I'm really liking that. I, I love the way that the music comes back in just as I've finished saying what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and just put in all the duct audio wherever my vocals are coming in. So you don't need to watch me doing that for all of them. Be back in a second. And there we go. So while you were away, I basically just put in all the ducts there like that. Now you've got to remember that this video is a little bit weird because my vocals just keep coming in and out. So it's more like a voiceover for an advert. Normally if you're making a podcast or an, a YouTube video, you, you'd have your vocals you know, running for minutes and you'd only have to duck once or twice in a video. Or if you're talking over a, a video with a voiceover, you'd have to do something similar to me. But it really doesn't take that long, so it's, it's not such a big deal to do that. Let's just have a listen to the effect that this is having and we'll watch the video together. It's only 45 seconds, and then we can talk about how we can improve this. Let's go. Are you where you want to be? Or are you just moving aimlessly? Stuck in the same old, same old. It's time to break free and choose your own path. Go on, break free. And hit that subscribe button and also the like button and the bell notifications. Now, I'm sure you'll all agree that the message in this video was vital for humanity. But if we have a look at my timeline, you can see what's going on here and how we basically created this wonderful ducking of the audio 
making sure that my vocals stood up. And you can see that I've put a fade at the end, just as the clip is fading, the music fades slightly afterwards. That's a really nice effect, by the way, to fade your music on the black screen rather than fade it while the picture's still on. Now, the things to remember before we send this off to YouTube or wherever we're trying to export it to is to make sure that we are always looking at this top panel. Now, let's pay attention to that left and right channel. Let's go to the loudest parts of our video. Let's just play. And I want everybody to just concentrate on the LR, the master output channel. Remembering it's still set to zero. Go on, break free. You can see that the output monitor basically hovers around minus 18 to minus 12. That is perfect for YouTube. So YouTube will take this video, process the audio, and it will sound really nice. It will sound almost exactly as it does here on my headphones. What we don't want to do is be tempted to pull that up and hit that and try to get that red marker to zero. That's a mistake, so try to stay away from this. I'm gonna set it back to zero where it was. I'll be confident that when I export this, it's going to sound really good on YouTube. Well, I hope this video was useful and showed you how easy it is to get audio into Lightworks, how to use this top panel over here on the audio tab, just so that you can see the levels and have that confidence to know that your music should be hovering between minus 18 and minus 12, your vocals never higher than minus six, lower is better. And to keep your eye on that output channel over there, the left, right channel, just to make sure things aren't creeping up to zero and keep them down and have the confidence to pull those sliders down when you need to. Now, if you're making a video with more vocal tracks, more music tracks, the same applies. Remember that sound is cumulative. It adds on to each other. It's like layers. So the more loud tracks you have, the louder your entire video is going to be. As I've said to many students over the years, people will put up with a bad picture, grainy, fuzzy, but very few people can stomach a video where the sound is distorted too loud or too unpredictable. So when you get the sound of your video right, people will not only watch your videos, but they'll listen to what you're saying. So until next time, only thing I have to say is subscribe and also hit the bell notification and like button as well. See you later.